All right, here we're told we have a volumetric flow rate of 0.3 cubic meters per second of water. And it's flowing through a 150 millimeter diameter constriction in a 300 millimeter diameter horizontal pipeline. So the pipeline coming in here is 300 millimeters, and then it goes down to 150 millimeters here. And we're told that the pressure at the inlet is 345 kilopascals gauge, and that the head lost between this point and the outlet of the constriction is three meters. So basically from here to here, there's a head loss of three meters. That's a, that would be um, a, a minor head loss because you know it's a constriction here. Calculate the pressure at the outlet of the constriction. So we want to know the pressure down here. This will be an extended Bernoulli equation problem. So we'll identify a point one here and a point two over here. And we'll write the extended Bernoulli equation between those points. So we'll write that out. Right. Just a reminder what the extended Bernoulli equation is. If you look at these terms, this is a pressure head, a velocity head, and an elevation head. But you can sort of think of them as energy terms. This would be like a potential energy term, a kinetic energy term. This is a pressure work term. You know, work and energy have similar units or same units. So this would so at point one here, this would be the total energy coming in at point one. We lose some energy due to losses. Maybe we add some energy in due to fluid machinery, or you could remove it here as well. And then this would be the energy you get out. So that's really what the extended Bernoulli equation is all about. It comes from the first law of thermodynamics. Anyway, let's go ahead and write down what we know in this problem. So we know P1, that's given, that's the 345 kilopascals gauge. Uh, Z1 and Z2 are going to be equal to one another. It, 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 we're not told anything about elevation differences, so we'll assume that it's horizontal. Oh, well, actually we are told that it's horizontal so that they'll have the same elevation. We're told the head loss between those two points is three meters. There's no shaft, uh, there's no fluid machinery so the shaft head term is going to be zero. So, uh, and then the next thing is we have to find the velocity head at each of the points. So, we can find the average velocity at each point by the volume, by using the volumetric flow rate. The average velocity will be the volumetric flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area of the pipe in those places. So we can do that for location one, and it'll be it'll look much the same for location two. So we can find those average velocities. And if we go ahead and let me just calculate what those values are. So we know the volumetric flow rate is 0.3 cubic meters per second. We know D1 is 300 millimeters. We know D2 is 150 millimeters. So if you're careful with your units and you plug in the numbers, you'll get V1 comes out to be 4.24 meters per second, and V2 comes out to be tw uh, 17 meters per second. Now to find the kinetic energy correction factors, the alphas here, and alpha 1 and alpha 2, let's first find the Reynolds number for the flow just to see whether we're dealing with a laminar or turbulent boundary, or laminar or turbulent pipe flow. Uh, the Reynolds number, recall, is the average velocity times the pipe diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity. In this case we're dealing with water. Uh, the kinematic viscosity of water is about 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6 square meters per second. So we can plug in the value for the average velocity and the pipe diameter and the kin kinematic viscosity and you'll get that the Reynolds number at 1 comes out to be 7.07 .07 times 10 to the fifth. The Reynolds number at 2 is 1.41 times 10 to the sixth. So they're clearly much larger than the transition Reynolds number of about 2300. So we can say that the flow is turbulent at both locations. Which means that the kinetic energy correction factor at 1 and the kinetic energy correction factor at 2 are both about equal to 1. All right, so we, now we have all the information we need. We can go ahead and rearrange this uh, extended Bernoulli equation to solve for the pressure at 2. So let me do that. So P2 would be P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared minus V2 squared. I, I use the assumption, or, not, or the 
fact that the kinetic energy correction factors are equal to 1, so that's why you don't see the alphas here. And then we have also the head loss term. So we know all the values for these things. We can plug them in and solve for P2. And when you do that, it comes out to be 100 kilopascals gauge pressure. And it's a gauge pressure here because we had a gauge pressure for P1. Um, the only other thing that I guess I should mention is that the density, we use the density of water being 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter and G being 9.81 meters per second squared. All right, so this is a relatively straightforward extended Bernoulli equation problem. So you had to just recognize it's an extended Bernoulli equation problem. We're trying to solve for P2. The only other things that uh, you had to do really was just convert from volumetric flow rate to velocities calculate some Reynolds numbers so you can figure out what sort of kinetic energy correction factors to use. Uh, so that's it. We'll go ahead and end it there.